We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode, we have something fun and exciting in store for you. Today's episode is Mr. Right versus Mr. Right Now. And sitting in the G spot, don't get scared, that is guest spotlight, okay? (laughs) I have the beautiful and lovely Monique Kelly. She is a high-powered Hollywood player and blogger behind the popular site Confessions of a Serial Dater in LA. And she is a a dating expert and author of Reality in Chaos, which uh, sounds a lot like what is we're going through right now. <laughs> Girl, hello. <laughs> but you guys may recognize Monique from a fabulous episode that we just appeared on uh, the Tamron Hall show. And oddly enough, and interestingly enough, and of course, fabulously enough, uh, Monique and I have worked together in the past on different relationship panels, um, such as Love is a Verb. Um, We recently were on the Tamron Hall show and, you know, she puts on amazing events. And also, you know, I've been like, I've been, you know, we've been following each other for a long time. And I was after this opportunity with Tamron Hall, I was like, let me go ahead and bring her on this show. She's got a new book that we're going to be talking about. Uh, (laughs) And so, you know, super excited to have you on. You are going to be addressing some hot topics with us around Mr. Right versus Mr. Right now. But to warm you up on this, Uh-oh, spicy look, warm life, me up, girl. you have to tell everybody when you first fell in love with yourself. Oh, my goodness. When I first truly fell in love with myself, not the fake it till you make it. Yeah. It was shortly, well, not even shortly, a few years after my divorce because I was married and, you know, got married I didn't even get married young. I got married in my late twenties. And when I went through the divorce and just rediscovering who I was Mm -hmm. now as that woman, I had a lot of work to do on myself. I had a lot of things I had to heal with myself. I had a lot of past hurts I had to heal even outside of just the marriage ending. So it was a few years after my divorce when I really was just like, wow, Monique, you're actually... (laughs) you're pretty damn cool. So it, like, that's when it really happened was that grown woman, unapologetic loving of myself. So I would say, I yeah, I, I was in my thirties, mid thirties, actually. Honey. She grown. She was grown. Look, yeah. we're not, some of us out there here are still healing. Uh, a lot of people are coming off of breakups during um, COVID, like yeah. quarantine really put some things in perspective for people. So they're going through some heartbreaks. Yeah. What are some of the things that you, you know, did to heal from the divorce and, you know, rediscover yourself? So one of the things I've done since I was in elementary school, I have kept a journal for years. Every journal that's all yeah. done is now in my safe, locked, one friend knows the combination. <laughs> so if something happens to me, she has instructions, get them journals and burn that sucker up. Don't you look about that. So I've always journaled. Um, I started writing letters to my exes as well that I never mailed. We talked about this on the show, Love but it. I never mailed. Love it. Um, also, I'm all about writing things, making it tangible, saying it out loud to myself in the mirror so I can just get it all out and just feel those emotions. And obviously, I'm a fan of therapy. Therapy is something beautiful that is so important. I remember when I went to therapy, I went to therapy to figure out the divorce. And then you get there, you're like, well, dang, I didn't realize I had that many other things I had to work on too. (laughs) So that's some of the things that I have definitely done to get to this place. Okay, you just mentioned, we talked about, uh, you know, breakups and, you know, releasing exes. Um, And the spicy tip that um, you're referring to is on the Tamron Hall show, uh, Monique and I were both in agreement with removing exes from your life, like doing a detox, doing a cleanse. Um, The actual spicy tip was um, for you to write a letter, pour your heart into it, um, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything that you want to share with them and never mail it. I also believe in burning it up and burying it. And during the show, while we're saying this on the Tamron Hall show, Monique is like nodding her head. She's like, yes, mm-hmm, agreed, agreed. There I was, was like, someone, there was someone else on the show though. <laughs> Another guest who was a part of the panel of uh, relationship experts, but she was a, I think, um, sex expert. And she said that she felt like it was perfectly fine still revisiting past relationships and exes after the breakup and sleeping with them because like it doesn't make your number count go up and um as long as it wasn't a toxic relationship it's perfectly fine to sleep with them i need to hear your real take on it now that we aren't on maybe like national television um talking right. about it and we right. have to be like right let's, let's, let's be real. <laughs> I take it, like, and be honest did you go and sleep with your ex-husband multiple times after the divorce 
<laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> please, please no, share no, no. what is wrong with that. <laughs> like, I talk about this all the time. I talk about it on my blog. I talk about my videos. What happens with women, especially right now during COVID yeah. is you have this tendency to get comfortable with an ex. Mm-hmm. You let your fear, anxiety, make you make desperate moves. You let yep. cabin fever lead you to that desperate move that, you know, you know, deep down inside, this person has proven that they are a fool continuously. And what happens is you reach out to that ex, you have sex with them. After the sex is over, you feel more empty. You feel that same person, right? So a lot of women, they fool themselves into thinking, okay, I'll just keep sleeping with my ex, still seeing him. And when someone else comes along, I can end it. No, because that energy you're putting into that ex you could be putting into someone else. You could be putting into yourself. And into yourself. self-love, yes. Self, 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 especially right now during quarantine. So sleeping with an ex, whether it's a toxic ex or a not toxic ex, you are putting old energy into your present life. Correct. And that's just a no-no. You just don't do it. You just don't do it. I could not agree with you more. And, you know, I always appreciate a difference in opinion, which is why, like, we welcomed, you know, the other girl's opinion um, on the show. I'm sure that's why Tamara tossed it to her and, you know, asked, like, oh, you know, what do you think of this? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I think Tamara agreed with us. Low-key, low-key. Tamara agreed. (laughs) (laughs) Look. But... You know, what, what I, I agree with everything you say from an energy standpoint, especially because oftentimes we're not doing things that serve us. And even though we think that we like we've moved on or it's OK to take that person back or there's a familiarity there, a part of that could also be self-sabotaging when it comes to us allowing ourselves to make room and space for the new love. And we may not be crediting it as sabotage, but really it is when you are preventing yourself from the proper healing process or, you know, potentially putting yourself in a position to go on dates with other people, you can't do that at the same time while you're doing the walk of shame or the comfort, you know, walk with your ex because he's in your bed. So how are you going to go on the date at the same time while you're in your bed with your ex? (laughs) Exactly. I I mean, it's just not a good idea. It's not. And I think for a lot of people, because the the young lady we're talking about, I think she's a little bit younger. I think she might be a Gen Y or Gen Z or whatever. Yeah, Gen Z, I think, or something like that. I think a lot of times that's something, a a pattern, especially with my followers, that a lot of them see themselves falling into. And what happens is even for people our age or my age, I want to, but you know, you know, women that have been on and off with this toxic ex since their twenties and it's a decade later and they're still doing the same dance it ain't cool. You're not going to have the carry big ending. That right. <laughs> the carry big ending for real sex <laughs> in the city. Yeah. You, most of us are not going to experience it being, you know, the exception to the rule. Yeah. And, you know, we always do try to trace back to that, you know, we we'll have this one friend who did wind up, you know, that one night stand did wind up working up, or I have this one, you know, friend who did sleep with their ex and it wind up working out or, you know, they got back together, but like, usually we learn better behaviors by creating, you know, great patterns, not by, you know, keeping the old poor habits that we had. And yep. so we have to change our environment, our circumstance, our you know person that is leading us. Um, yeah. Cause if he wasn't a good leader before quarantine, he probably didn't become a good one during. He's probably worse now. <laughs> Dude, you know he's worse now. Dude, come on. <laughs> he's real comfy right now. Okay. But I have to get into like these spicy tips. Cause I want to hear some um, spice coming from you in regards to- like- What I see all the time when it comes to, you know, my clients, when it comes to dating, and I know you probably see this as well, is we, you know, we'll start dating someone um, we've swiped or we've met them, you know, in the grocery store, wherever, you know, we're meeting them. Mm. And we can't necessarily identify whether we should invest more or pull back a little bit. Are we rushing into it? You know, what are some signs that he is, you know, Mr. Right or that he's a great guy and it's worth your time? You know, I always say when you have to ask yourself what's going on and you have that feeling of insecurity of like, you don't know where the relationship is, Mm -hmm. like, is he going to call me? Is what's happening? Yeah. When you're in the right relationship with the right man, I can tell you firsthand, it flows naturally. It's effortless. It doesn't mean you have, don't have those 
few insecure moments in the beginning because that's natural when you start mm-hmm. dating someone and also that's still some of the remnants of your past that kind of creeps in and you have to work on those little voices from the yeah. past because <laughs> even with therapy even with journaling when you meet a good man you're always like oh my god this man is so good I mean it's amazing for the other shoe to drop what's right happening? but I always like to say when you're in a healthy situation, you know it, you feel it. Mr. Right now, you know, in the pit of your stomach, you feel it, you know, your intuition tells you something just ain't right. Even if you can't put your finger on it, something's just feeling not okay. I don't know. A little what it off. Is. Mm-hmm. And it's a little off and you don't ignore that. You don't ignore that. I'm not saying run away right away, but don't ignore that sign because that's usually a sign that it's a Mr. Right now. So I always talk about going into yourself and listening to those signs. When a man tells you, you know, you're cool, but I'm not really looking for a relationship right now. (laughs) That ain't going to switch up. Right. A lot of times you think, oh, well, maybe, you know, in time he will feel this way. He's told you straight up. He has no interest in you being his boo. Mm -hmm. He's telling you that. So if you proceed with the relationship, no, that's not going to change. So little signs, you have to listen to what the guy is saying to you and you have to listen to what your inner gut, your inner intuition is telling you. Yeah, it sounds like you're saying like check in with your intuition, but also your emotions. How does he make you feel? Does he make you feel safe? Does he make you feel secure? Check in with your emotions. And what happens oftentimes is we have chosen the wrong person that we stop trusting ourselves. And we're like, well, I don't know if this is a, a good emotion. I don't know if I know I'm really feeling this or if he's making me feel this, if he's igniting this within or if I'm conjuring it up. Yeah. So I would recommend you guys channeling back for, you know, Mr. Right versus Mr. Right now is, you know, are you truly happy? Are you happy with him? Are you, are you happy without him? And is it only adding to the happiness? Because that's the emotional gut check that, you know, Monique is talking about. <laughs> She's like, what, you know, what are you feeling inside? Well, if, if your yep. intuition is a little sketchy because you've made some bad decisions, channel back to, am I happy prior to him coming into my life so that I know I'm not in, entirely uh, dependent on him 100% for the happiness? Yep. <laughs> yep. Hello. And is he, is he adding more? Is he pouring more, you know, in? Um, another one that I'm curious about. Okay. So, um, cause I did some digging on like Mr. Right versus Mr. Right now. Yeah. How do you feel about him making you a better person? Do you think that a partner can make you a better person? And should you be looking for Mr. Right to make you a better person? Cause I feel like Mr. Right now actually has you, um, yeah. Mr. Right now actually has you like slipping on your goals. Like he's a yeah, distraction. That's, that's <laughs> right. that's a point spicy because what happens is I always like to say in a relationship, it's about two people coming together and supporting each other to be your greatest person in the relationship, in your work life, just in general, right? So when someone comes into your life, if you've done the work, your life yes. is already full. You're already living, I hate to say living your best life. That is so hey, over okay, news, well, but right. you're living your best life. You have your <laughs> girlfriends, you travel right. pre-COVID, you <laughs> work life, right? So if someone comes into your life and you find yourself, you're here and suddenly you find yourself coming down, like Mm -hmm. you're not doing the things you used to love as much, like the energy's down, that's giving you a sign versus someone coming into your life. You got, he's doing great. You're doing great. Talk about what your goals are, what you want in life. And he is your biggest cheerleader. You're his biggest cheerleader. You'll be like, mm-hmm. babe, I saw this and I thought this would be perfect for you. Yeah. Well, this is all you're doing. And he does the same thing. Like with my man, he comes in and he's the biggest cheerleader. Every single TV appearance he's watching and like, that's, I'm so proud of you. And what Hi, I babe. realized is I love it. Girls, the best. <laughs> and I realized like relationships don't have to have drama. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that y'all aren't going to get in each other's nerves, but you can have a relationship where you, you guys can maybe have disagreements, but it's a healthy way of discussing things. He comes into your life and he just gets it. He gets yep. you the things he doesn't get. He doesn't judge you. He's not like, Oh, you so bougie. You so high maintenance. <laughs> That's another sign. When a man comes in, he's all like, you so bougie, you so high maintenance. Why you need to do this? Girl, stop. <laughs> Before you met him, buying your own stuff. I was about to slip up and say another word. Buying your own stuff. It's okay. You can come. Oh, okay. Me. I'll let buying your own stuff. <laughs> and then someone comes into your life and they trying to tell you how to spend your own money because they ain't got it. That's to me is telling you something. 
I'm just I saying. Agree. I went on a tangent, but you get what I'm saying, spicy. When someone is trying to uh, change your lifestyle and not for the improvement or for the better, they're yeah. trying to like take away, right? They're not making deposits, they're making withdrawals. And Whoa. they also show up as insecure. So a lot of times it's not that, oh, you're so bougie. You're so, you know, you're just, you're just too fabulous. You're just too over the top. Sometimes it's, it makes them feel uncomfortable that one, they don't, they're not as cultured as you, or they don't have as much experience or as much access. Mm -hmm. And so that sometimes makes them get a little bit in their feels. Yes. Look yes. out for that. That is definitely oh, wow. a red flag right there. Um, it's a huge red flag. I'm experiencing that with some money. clients right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, be like, it's about, it's not even just about money. It's even just about you going out and having fun. Like mm -hmm. someone, even someone I know, they exercise all the time. If someone comes into your life, like, God, you exercise so much. No, that, that like, that's what you love to do. Okay. Right. It might be excessive, but if that's what you love to do, then that's what you should be doing. So it's not just about monetary stuff. It's about your lifestyle in general. Yes. I love that. I am in full agreement. And the lifestyle, the things that you enjoy, that should be shared. Like, of course, you know, early on, you're going to, you know, talk about it and you're going to do it and pay attention to, you know, how does, you know, Mr. Right now, if that's who he is, you know, reacts, what is the reaction? Are they, you know, excited to join in or are they come perfectly comfortable with you, you know, doing it on your own and then maybe doing a different activity with you? Because you guys are going to always like the exact same things. It's okay right. to have different activities that you appreciate, but you got to have at least some things that you come together and do and that you're able to enjoy. But they should be, you know, happy seeing you be happy doing these things. Like it should be bringing them joy. And so make sure that you didn't get you, you know, a hater ass hater. Um, in a relationship because <laughs> sometimes they be hating and it creates a competitive energy yeah I hate when I see it but it, I mean it, it happens it definitely happens yep. um, another one that I want to touch on is Mr. Right now versus Mr. Right okay makes you Mr. Right makes you completely forget about your ex is that possible yes Come the only me. time your ex comes up is you're like wow. <laughs> I was what I wanted was not un, like it wasn't unrealistic I wasn't tripping I wasn't the person with the issue you're like wow and you just suddenly it all makes sense or yeah you have an appreciation I know for me it's an appreciation of okay I went through some I went through some shit right yes <laughs> but I look back and I say if I knew then that going through all that shit would lead me to where I am now I would say, okay, I know it's going to be a ride, <laughs> but at least I know it's going to end off here. And it's the same for the exes. You start being like, wow, they really were effed up. Or <laughs> I, I was tripping because I wanted something that was feasible, but they were gaslighting me like, you're, that's not like feasible. Crazy. That's so true, spicy. That's so true. Oh my God, you are tapping it. We, cause I, cause I need the, the confirmation from you. I got the dating expert over here. We need, I need all the confirmations. Okay. Does now, and this is one that I'm sure you hear all the time, as far as like how he shows up, does he just fall on, you know, your lap or does, you know, is it something that you have to work for? But like, does Mr. Right show up at the moment that you expect it, or is it unexpected? Like when you're working on self, you're in your zone, you're walking in your purpose and he is ready and he shows up. Mm -hmm. or okay. is it like the spontaneous thing and it's like how does Mr. Right versus Mr. Right now show up so I love that you asked me this spicy because this is one of my biggest peas and if you read my blog it's I, it's, I probably Go read her blog every single blog post okay <laughs> the worst thing you could tell a single person is oh you'll meet someone when you stop looking why do people tell that untruth? I don't know if that's a word. That's a lie. <laughs> that lie, untruth. Okay? That fallacy. <laughs> that untruth. Okay. Let me say it with an F. Untruth. Untruth. <laughs> single people that it's quite frankly, it's condescending and it's just not true. And who is spreading that rhetoric? Not experts, please. Not the experts. No, <laughs> not one expert says that because at the end of the day, you meet the person, you might not meet them the way you expected to meet them. You might not meet them in the way that you thought you would, but Correct. you have to be putting yourself out there to look. You have to be working on yourself. You have to be putting yourself out there. Right now we are in the middle of a pandemic, okay? I get not everybody's into dating apps, okay? 
dating apps, people, more people are on dating apps than ever before. So right. if you've never tried them, try it, you know, go out there, try the dating apps. But if you've tried it and you realize it's just not for me, that's okay. Cause maybe it's not for everyone. Putting yourself out there is perhaps going to a different grocery store in a different neighborhood. I always talk about this. I've been doing that and I'm that's in a, a relationship and lately I've been going to different grocery stores because I'm tired of my routine. I'm like, wow, I need to tell my single friends, like there are some good looking men at this Whole Foods right over here. And what <laughs> so it's like, go different places in terms of your exercise routine, go on different jobs, like switch things up and tell your friends that you're looking for someone. Tell your friends to hook you up. Like put yourself out put there. Put the word to- out there for yeah. sure. Yep. Yeah. Are you finding that a lot of people though are trying to use um, COVID and having to quarantine as an excuse to not meet someone? In the beginning, I feel like people were, were actually with the opposite. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, singles were like, oh crap, I can't go out anywhere. This is crazy. Like you're in your place and you're just like, I don't know what to do with myself. I can't go anywhere. So people really were on the dating apps. And at that point I was telling my followers, that's really the only place you're going to meet someone right now. And there's more people on there who are not normally on there. So yeah. Go on those dating apps yep. and go for it. It made people do that more often and put themselves out there more. But as things start opening up, people are getting more comfortable. <laughs> like, I'm tired or I've, you know, I tried dating apps and I didn't meet anyone or I had a quarantine boo that didn't work out. And you're seeing more and more excuses happening. So I feel like there's going to be a new change now. Things are changing all over the country. Ooh, what's your, what's your crystal ball tell you? What's the shift? What do you think is going to happen? January is going to be like, we're going to have a new administration. We're going to have just everything's vibrant. Okay. It's new beginnings. New energy. Yes. We have survived. We have a common PTSD. We're all going to share. (laughs) And as things open up, singles are going to be more open and like, okay, I was quarantined and now I'm going to focus. Cause I think people are spending time focusing on themselves and improving themselves, getting it rid of toxic crap out of their yep. life. And I think people are really going to be open to the possibilities. 2021 January is going to be off the chain. Oh, I'm so excited. I already know I'm going to get a whole wave of people reaching out because that's what always happens top of year anyways it's like the gym all of a sudden they're like oh my new year's resolution is to find love this year so we're our business is about to be booming and everybody keeps asking like how's you know business during this year and i'm like honestly it's really good because people are taking this time to do the self-work they're like help me so that when the you know gates open back up i can start dating successfully so i know you and i are going to be blessed um again in 2020 <laughs> Because <laughs> because love is always going to be in style. Love is always going to be needed. And so my next one that I want you to talk, comment on okay. is Mr. Right takes care of you versus Mr. Right now takes care of himself. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about that one? Oh, my God. And they'll love taking care of you. It's like an honor to take care of you. And it's yeah. not just, again, I love because a lot of people, what happens is they focus on monetary because it's their own insecurity because that's all they hear because they don't have their own stuff. <laughs> just spit, spitting fire and right you, now <laughs> you already know but when i say take care of you they take care of you emotionally spiritually mm. mentally, physically it's it is the best feeling ever and they want to take care of you they take pride in taking care of you and you want to take care of them you want to reciprocate I mean, yeah they make you feel safe to reciprocate yes because when you're being well taken care of when your spirit is being fed you want to feed someone else. You want to make sure you guys are healthy together. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful thing and it is possible. It's possible. It really is. I think one of the mistakes that we make though, and um, we talked about this out on the Tamron Hall show too. And I think even like Matthew had um, touched on this was us giving more than we're receiving. So in, in the way of like us misreading and wanting to not, like not having a clear understanding of what someone's intentions are and jumping all in versus it being a process where you take a step, I take a step, you take a step, I take a step. And a lot of us get extremely anxious, you ladies, you know who I'm talking to, and jump all in (laughs) deep dive, right? (laughs) Into this pool of love and they're there by themselves. Yeah, He's not there yet. 
what are some things that they can do to keep being, themselves in check so that they aren't caring more about him than he cares about them or it's not imbalanced? Oh, that's such a good one. And it, especially when you really like someone and you want it so bad, yeah. you have to check your expectations of the timing of the relationship. Timing. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. So on it. Okay. Because what happens is, and ladies, I'm knowing this from firsthand experience. I love to say I've done the legwork for you. <laughs> that's mistake. Right. What happens is you have a timeline in your mind of how things should go. And then when you meet someone and you really like them, you start fast forwarding and letting your anxiety take, mm -hmm. make, take the best out of you. And you start feeling like that anxiety of rushing things, of trying to force things yep. instead of letting it happen organically. So what I like to tell people is approach dating as hard as it may sound, have fun with it. If you have a tendency, they talked about this on the show, to interview guys, interview your dates, do dates that are more fun and interactive, mm -hmm. do a wine tasting, do an art class together. Right now it's COVID. Take a socially distanced walk, take a bike ride, yep. you know, do hike. fun things, hike, exactly. Do fun things where you are doing an activity that is fun, that is not just about sitting at a dinner table and having to make conversation. And just like really listen to what the person's saying and let things flow organically. What I've learned is men will tell you everything you need to hear. You don't have to go down your check mark of, okay, I want kids, <laughs> your plan, like all of that crap. You will get that information organically. And then when you get it organically, the guy isn't put off feeling like you trying to like interview him and look for your future husband and baby daddy. Yeah. Take your wedding gown out of the purse. <laughs> the <damn> date. <laughs> and then what, but what about though, when the guy is giving them the impression that it's moving faster than what it is. And it ain't really even that, like, he's just kind of gassing them up and giving them like a false sense of hope because men also do, you know, have different, you know, they have some ulterior motives, not all of them. Cause I am, you know, pro men. I love my men, mm -hmm. but some of them do know that there are certain words that they have to say certain ways that they have to make you feel in order to make you feel safe and comfortable so that they can get what they want. Sometimes it's sex. Sometimes it's just companionship. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants a relationship, but they're acting like they do. Sometimes they just want a companion. Meanwhile, we want commitment. Yes. And meanwhile, you're acting like a girlfriend doing girlfriend right. stuff and you're not even the girlfriend yet. Correct. So, you know, I always like to say, listen to what they are telling you. Listen to, are their words and actions meeting, right? Are they saying one thing, doing another? And also check in with that feel, that feeling where you're like, some, if you have this slight inkling, this feeling of like something doesn't feel right. It's just, I can't put my finger on it, but I'm feeling like, I feel like he's full of shit. Or I feel like, <laughs> like, is he trying to play me? Or I think he's just trying to have sex. Like your, your intuition will tell you everything. And when you're having that doubt, when you're having that doubt, listen to it and proceed accordingly. I'm not saying don't mess with them, but I'm saying, listen to it. And if what your goal is a, is a relationship, don't start doing desperado stuff. Like if you're looking for a relationship, mm -hmm. you're having that doubt, don't sleep with them yet. Because what happens is you're going to sleep with them, Ooh. thinking it's going to change things. And then it doesn't, or, or he might not have been tripping. Then you start tripping because you know, you slept with them before you should have. Facts. And then you start acting all crazy. And then you turning him off because you flipping the script and acting all like clingy and all. So just listen to that gut. I, I, that's what I've learned in all of my dating, my followers, we talk about it, even my girlfriends. If you listen to it, it will tell you everything. This is the part that a lot of people don't want to listen to though. It's the, yeah. the, a lot of women try to convince themselves that they're not attached to sex, that they can, you know, separate it. And majority of you, I'm not going to lie, are emotionally connected to sex that you, you know, the expectation does change after you do that. And you may not be having sex to try to get him. You may yeah. be actually rationalizing with yourself. Like, well, I have needs and I want it and I'm grown. You can be as grown as you want to and yeah. still afterwards not be in the same headspace as him. And if you're willing to be alone and anxious by yourself when he isn't there yet after you've been intimate with him, then by all means, I'm gonna still say don't do it. But no, especially if it's good, it's good. <laughs> you really still don't. You're really gonna be jacked up at the still good. don't. <laughs> See, because you're really gonna be messed up. Like I know, because I, I, I've heard every excuse in the book on why we should, right? Yeah. And I'm not trying to stop people from living their best lives and right. being grown. 
But what I always advise is that if you don't know where he stands, if you don't really know him as a person, because in the dating process, they're still strangers. Like until you know this person and you're on the same page with him, you're taking a huge gamble. It, mm-hmm. It's already a gamble emotionally to, you know, be um, vulnerable, but now you're taking a gamble with your body when you know that you emotionally react in the past a little crazy after you <sighs> do it to someone. A little clingy a little bit. Right. So why are we repeating same patterns and behaviors? Yes. You were on the same page with me. This is one that I always tell people, but I've heard, I've heard different coaches and different people, you know, give different advice. Um, but y'all need to stop taking advice from your home girl, you know, single friends, um, that, <laughs> that haven't been in a healthy relationship advice. anymore. <laughs> stop taking advice. I'm not going to name names from men who have scandals, but they trying to give you relationship mm. advice. And meanwhile, they got a bunch of scandals in the closet that the public don't know. Okay. Ooh. Stop doing that. Stop taking advice Ooh. from friends where it's like, well, <laughs> We only slept with each other on the first date and we're fine. That's an anomaly. It's Thank an anomaly. you. And trust and believe it might not have been a smooth transition. Yes, they're married now, but you don't know what they went through to get to that point. Why test out the theory? And right. I get people that get mad at me like, you know, you're so old school, but old school work for a reason, okay? <laughs> work for a reason. <laughs> and that's crazy because I feel like we are still modern in our approach because we know how to use all of the technology. Like we know how to use even strategy in our approach. But when it comes to male, female sexual intimacy, I will say we are old school with that. Like I will admit to that because that is the one thing that since the beginning of time has not changed god put eve with adam for a reason he knew that this was something that was going to control adam because if not he would have been running amok <laughs> you would have you would have ran biblical up in here I'm just saying, like, we discredit and we try to say, like, and men will even try to, feel, you know, give you this, this, that it's not as powerful as we think, but it is, especially it's powerful for us, but it's also powerful for them. But more importantly for us, because it controls our emotions, it controls our thought process, and it controls our behavior following up after we've done it. Mm-hmm. So we need to make sure all of those are in healthy alignment. Um, and if sex is going to muddle it and get you a little, you know, discombobulated, Let's right. pause and wait till we know him. <laughs> Let's pause, spicy. This is when we were on the show together, even on the panels, you and I would be like, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Because <laughs> geniuses recognize genius. Hello. <laughs> this is one more that you have to cover for me, too. Mr. Okay. Right is worth the fight. Mr. Right now isn't. So talk to me about conflict resolution when it comes to you being in a relationship with a guy who is Mr. Right. How is he going to handle it versus Mr. Right now? Okay. So the first thing you have to recognize is after all, like the beginning and the oohs and the ahs, you know, you settle into a natural relationship, yeah. right? Sometimes when you get to that place, you're like, oh crap, this isn't all, you know, butterflies and roses and everything's Ooh. perfect, right? So when you're with the right person, the communication is so different, right? Because you realize even in the middle of a conflict that this person isn't against you. This person has your back. And the most important thing you realize with Mr. Right now as a woman, even the most alpha male woman, you actually respect this man. You are like, well, dang, <laughs> don't pop off of the mouth too much. I mean, I will pop off, but I know there's a certain line I'm not going to cross because I actually respect this man. I actually care about this man. So you're going to learn how to communicate effectively and you will have hiccups. Okay. Yeah. You have to learn each other's, just like you have to learn each other's love language. You have to learn each other's you know, argument language, you know, and letting, and the main thing is making sure you have communication. Does this man shut down? Does he walk away? If we, if he feels like I'm feeling some kind of way about something, does he not care? He just keeps moving. Yeah. Totally different relationship. But the difference is with Mr. Right versus Mr. Right now, you will respect him and he will respect you. And it's a completely different argument. So you will still pop off at the mouth. I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay? You're still a woman. You may slippy slip. <laughs> moment, okay? But you, your moment will only go to a certain point. And then you'll be like, oh, shit. Let me just, let me settle down. <laughs> you not go too far. Because <laughs> you will learn by spending time with him, to your point, to Moni's point earlier about time, right? You will learn by spending time with him, whether he operates from, you know, freeze, fight, or flight. Like, yes. what does he do? Oh, I- 
what does he do when you put him in a situation where it's uncomfortable? Because that's what arguments are. That's what disagreements yeah. are. When you don't see eye to eye with your partner, you're like, dang it, you know, it was going so well. I don't want to be fighting with you. Or I don't want to, you know, bump heads. But this is how you learn whether you guys are compatible or not. Yeah. So totally. see how he reacts. You know, fight, flight, or freeze. Pay attention. And then how do you react too? Do do those two work well with each other when it comes to resolving a conflict? Because if right. not, you guys need to have a serious conversation about how you want to resolve. You know, it's so funny, Spicy, because I know people and people argue differently. For me, I don't do well with the shutdown, not talking for days. Yeah. And then I have some yeah. friends, they live with their man or they're married. Like, oh, we haven't talked in a few days. I'm, you know, I'm mad at him. That does not Whoa. work. Me we either. have to walk around here not speaking to each other. Uncomfortable. That, <laughs> that, that's what we're not doing. So you have to understand what works for one couple. Yeah. It might not work for you. And know what, to your point, know what works for you and know what your non-negotiable is in communication. Yeah, that's a great point. I love that because you're right. Some men prefer space. Some men want to address it right away. And the same for women as well. Some women want to gather their thoughts and, yeah. you know, they do want to, you know, control their reactions. So they want some time to process yeah. uh, other women be like, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's control that as much as we can. Cause we want the relationship to last <laughs> girl, girl. <laughs> some of y'all need to see us. If, um, if you do communicate that way, cause it may not be the healthiest yeah. way or, or serve the relationship. <laughs> Okay, Girl. you you have you have definitely like so much insight to offer. I want to know what inspired this dang book. How did you Okay, you got to talk to me about it. Reality and Chaos, the meaning of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The 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 characters, I want to know the arc, I want to know the protagonist and the antagonist. I'm just like you throwing words out there now that I've oh, I love <laughs> it. I love it. <laughs> Is so there this a score book, in books? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's film, right? Never mind. Okay. Protagonist. <laughs> right. Go ahead. You better take it back to school. So with me, you know, I wrote a blog, or I still write a blog, but for years. And with me writing my blog, there's certain things I'm not going to talk about in a blog. My blog was important that my mother, my grandmother could read it and not want to smack me. Okay. Oh, wow. So, you know, although I cuss like a sailor, I'm not going to talk about certain things that you know, you feel there's a little bit of a judgment sometimes when you're writing a, a dating blog and about yeah. your personal experiences. So I said for my first book, most people assumed it was going to be a dating guidebook, which is coming next. Yeah. But for this particular book, I wanted to write fiction. I so love this it. is about three women and HBCUs are huge right now. I went to Hampton University. Oh, hey, hey Spellman. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so these women met at Hampton University. And the whole premise of the book is you remember when you were in your 20s and you graduated from college and you're starting your life and you know exactly what your life is going to look like. You have it all planned out. It's yeah. like, like this, this is going to happen. Then you fast forward to life and each of these women fast forward, they're hitting 40 and what their life actually is and mm. how the, it's not what they thought and mm. finding there's a reality and chaos that happens around your life. And there's something that's consistent and that's your sisterhood and your friendships. Mm. So one of the characters is dealing with going through, she's in a very bad marriage and it's happening very early on. She had this idea of what marriage was going to look like. Yeah. And then she gets in the marriage and realizes it's not anything like that Ooh. in terms of that. Right. Another character, she's been in LA forever, you know, in LA trying to pursue that. <laughs> Never happens for her. And she gets an opportunity to do reality TV. Was it worth the price of fame? Mm. And last but not least is this strong, beautiful character who's dealing with a family member who has mental illness mm. and that journey of mental illness and having to take it on and realizing that you can't control some things in life. And it's just a beautiful book about sisterhood, friendship, love, um, dating, relationships. It's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful um book about that so I believe it it sounds like me and my girlfriends yeah. what why do we need to read this right now why is this something that's going to enrich our lives at this current moment I think spicy when I think about it there hasn't been a strong well no let me let me rephrase that Terry McMillan was mm -hmm. the last African-American fictional writer that really like spoke to people 
and it, and there's other great writers out there, but the one that really grabbed people for yeah. a while. And this book is what women need in terms of something that's going to grab them, make them, they can relate to, they can relate to the characters, they're memorable. And right now women need to see that they're not alone. Women need mm. to understand that there is light at the end of the tunnel and yeah. life sometimes does not turn out the way you thought it would. But if you appreciate the reality and the chaos, you realize <laughs> that the life that you actually have is better than what you could have ever imagined and dreamed of if you learn how to accept it as it comes. Mm, I love it. I love it. You guys have to grab this because it's coming out January 14th, which January 14th is, uh, is actually my birthday. So that's a good, that's good luck. That's your you. birthday. Yes, Capricorn. Ah. So that's a special day that it's coming out. That's all the, all the good vibes, all the good vibes to you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you though. So like Thank I too you. am um, working on mine. It will be more in regards to, you know, relationship and dating. Um, I love the idea of you doing a fictional piece first. At some point I will have one of those as well. But where was your inspiration? How did you decide like, this is what's going to go in it. These are the way that the characters are going to be. Um, did you put yourself in there? Like, how did you conjure it up? So it's fictional. Anything that might seem yeah, related uh -huh. is <laughs> well, <laughs> I have to say that. And I think what happened for me was these characters spoke to me. So my writing time was usually 11 30 p.m. to 4 a.m. in the morning. Oh, there's wow. Of the quiet during that time of day. Like right now, you probably hear there's a loud plane outside of my house right now. So, you know, there's a beauty of that time. And these characters, I love to say they came to me, they spoke to me mm. and it just manifested its way onto paper. I knew I wanted to do something that talks about HBCUs. I knew I wanted to do something that dealt with divorce. I knew I wanted to have strong black female characters. I knew that I wanted there to be lots of drama. Mm -hmm. I wanted there to be things with, you know, history of family stuff and things like that. So I just put all of those different ideas and these characters came to me and I just, they just manifested themselves. It was I love it. Thing. Yeah. So you mentioned the divorce component and you, um, a lot of your brand is around the fact that you are a successful divorcee. And by yeah. successful, I mean, you took a licking and you kept on ticking. Like you, yeah. didn't, you didn't lose your shine. You didn't lose your thunder. Your career continued to grow. Um, and you learned all of the lessons that you were supposed to from that previous experience. And then you help other people now, I feel yeah. like with that information, but what do you wish? And what could you tell for like my single listeners or some of those who are maybe questioning divorce? Like what would advice would you give to your former self prior to the divorce? Or even saying, walking down the aisle and saying, I do that you wish you would have known in advance to maybe prevent and like help some people from making a, a decision when it came, you know, when it comes to that, from well, making the wrong decision and your partner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's the thing before you get married, there are signs. Okay. For me, there were many signs prior to getting married and I felt like the train had left the station and I didn't know how to get off. Mm -hmm. You know, I put a lot of pressure on myself, not even my family, my yeah. family is so wonderful, but a lot of pressure on myself. So what I like to tell people now is that if you are in a situation, realize, don't let your insecurities and your fears drive your decisions. Yeah. Okay? That's the first thing. That's so important. Don't feel like this is the best you're going to get. Don't feel like that Ooh. feeling that you're feeling is not right or your mm -hmm. expectation is wrong. And if you do end up getting a divorce, you're going to be okay. Like I yeah. look at my divorce had that never happened, Confessions of a Serial Dater in LA would have never been born. My events, cocktails, and confessions would have never been born. Yeah. Like it was the, and I wouldn't have healed past hurts from childhood and other stuff. It forced me to really take a look at myself. So I never like to put everything on my ex because, mm -hmm. you know, that was just the inciting incident to use English. <laughs> but, you know, so I, it forced me to deal with me and become me unapologetically me loving myself more and recognizing and realizing that there is a life beyond that. If you take the, make the move to be brave enough to get out of a situation, or even if you didn't want to get out of the situation, even if someone left the situation, left you mm -hmm. and you're broken and you're just like, I don't know how I'm going to move forward. I don't know how I'm going to go on. And I just want to tell those people, I want to just hug them and mm. say, you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. 
I am the proof that you will be okay. Cause it was not always like this. It was yeah. not like, you know, some people get divorced, like I'm having a divorce party. I'm happy. I'm <laughs> happy about my divorce. It was sad. It was devastating. It was hurtful. It was, I felt like a failure. It was, and I, I want to be very clear with people. Like some, for some people, that's how it feels. You feel, mm-hmm. broken. but I am proof that you will be on the other side. And it's a beautiful thing to be there. For those who are unfam- a little bit unfamiliar with you or like still learning you for the first time, mm-hmm because they're going to, they're, trust me, they're going to be wondering, what do you think led to the divorce? Why did you and your partner divorce? Are you comfortable sharing that? Oh, I'll just, I can say this. We just weren't right for each. We, we should have not been married. Like he was meant to be married to someone else. Mm. I was meant to be married to someone else. We just, we were not equally yoked in. You weren't compatible. We weren't, we weren't. Mm-hmm. And I think for both of us at the time, we were very goal oriented. So it was like, okay, by this age, I want to do this. By this age, I want to do that. So I think we were two people that were like, okay, we're supposed to get married now. Mm-hmm. So let's just move forward with that. So for me, it was just like, he just, honestly, I can honestly say we were not right for each other. I was not right for him. <laughs> he was not Mr. Was right. Not right for me. Okay. <laughs> he should have been Mr. Right now. <laughs> okay. Exactly. He should have been Mr. Right now for sure. And that's what I can say. Cause I, I always like to put it about me. So I'm just like, for me, it was good to recognize that and be good <laughs> but you had like your recovery game was like strong because you created like a platform around being a serial dater in LA tell me some of that what are the what are the positives and negatives of serial dating what are the what are the highs what are the lows what are the risks and benefits <laughs> I want to tell everybody until you meet the right man everybody should be serial dating okay serial dating is about you continue to date people until you meet the person who makes sense okay yeah. So that's the thing, like everyone deep down should be a serial dater. For a lot of people, we talked about this earlier, mm-hmm. going on to Mr. Right now, and you you cheat yourself from experiencing Mr. Right. Yep. For me, it was like after coming out of a marriage and then dating in LA, I mean, these there are some fools out here. There's fools everywhere. Everywhere. In the country. <laughs> And I just started writing about it because I was just like, I tell my friends, they're like, I can't believe that happened. You should write about that. I was like, I know I can't make it up. And it just grew from there because people were like, oh my God, I thought it was that hap- that was I thought that only happened to me. And I think women were also missing that sex in the city because yeah, I've gone off. So my blog gives you like that sex in the city feel and it's just real and authentic about what we go through. So yeah, everybody needs to be a serial dater till you meet your bed. <laughs> We'll bring, we'll bring Monique back on for another episode so she can tell you how to be more successful at dating, like some additional tips on like how to get those dates. So people want help with that as well. That's why, you know, of course, clearly they come to us, but I can do probably a whole nother episode on like, this is how you get the guy. And we'll probably put some of it in our book as well, but. (laughs) Stacey, talking to you, you know, it's like, I'm talking to my girl. So thank you. What else could we look forward to you in in addition to um, your book that's coming out in January? Is there anything else? Any shoot? Are there any other shows that we're about to be on? Let me know. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So to, on this week, I'll be on California Live. I'm their resident oh, dating expert. I'm Good Day LA's resident dating expert. I also do another podcast for Living Legends. So I'm just I'm on a lot of stuff. But you can yes. find me at Cocktails and Confessions on IG as well as TikTok. And then my website, Confessions of a Serial Dater in LA.com. And then pre-order the book, Amazon.com yes. and Barnes and Noble.com. Yes, make sure you guys get her book. And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Mari. You can go to the spicylife.com for additional information, get coaching, get love, get the program, all of it. Uh, and make sure that you share this episode with a friend. Um, I will definitely be bringing Monique back on the show and please like reach out to her by all means, um, check out her blog, um, but have definitely enjoyed having you Monique on the show. You, oh, I can't, we, cause we used to do like access. I remember I would be doing access um, live with you as well. Like we are in the, the she's a part of my community. She's family yeah. to me now. <laughs> awesome. it's, and I, spicy, I met you when you were dating your husband. I know you husband. knew me when I was. I knew you guys were gonna, I'm like, he's, she's gonna marry that man. He came to the event. Yeah, it's and like they're supporting with his boys. <laughs> you felt it. it was like you could feel it and you were like so giddy and you still are. And I love Oh that. my God. Yes. Now, girl, now we're trying to, we're starting the, the, well, we're practicing, but we're ready to have a baby now. So now we're like, yes, yes we're doing oh, it. <laughs> yes. yes, that's what I mean for. <laughs> 
So we don't have, we, I need some tips for that too. I'm like, uh, can bring everybody on the show. Like, give me tips, give me tips. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to hear about this guy too. I'm like, this guy you're dating sounds incredible. Okay. We'll say it's good, but I must say the one thing I do, if you know, I, you know, I just certain things I keep close to the chest. He's amazing. He's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I keep it close to the chest. I keep I, okay. Well, look, and let me tell you guys this, what Monique just did right now, she did not fully answer my question because what she just did was honored her man. She, yes. there's something about the relationship that she finds important, that she it is sacred to her and she is protecting, she is coveting. She is, oh, not coveting, covering. <laughs> <laughs> she is covering her relationship. <laughs> So take a note from all of you guys who was like running around talking about all the details about your man. Some of you, mm -hmm. I want to put a little, you know, mums the word on that. I love that. And I respect that. Thank okay. You, Monique Kelly, big ups to you. Thank all you. Right. There Thank you guys you. have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.